Okay, in today's video, we are going to show you how to get your chirp file on your radio. If you've bought a chirp file from us, this is the instructional video on how to get it into your radio. So you're going to get an email like this, and this is what the program file is going to look like. We're going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to give you a warning. I assure you I'm not sending you any viruses. This is your program file. You need to download it download anyways and it's going to come up in your downloads you can either go to your folder or it's going to show up up here so i'm going to go ahead and open this and this is an example of a program file you're going to get so what you're going to do next is you're going to have to plug your radio into your computer shown here is a programming cable with the radio this is a pretty typical programming cable Depending on what radio you are using, it may look different. You need to order and use the correct programming cable for your radio. Once your radio is plugged into your computer and your radio is turned on, you are going to go to radio here. You are going to hit download from radio. And depending on what radio you have, you need to choose. In our case, I am using a Baofeng K5 Plus right here. Your radio is going to be different, so you need to pick the one that is yours. It's going to ask you a question, just hit yes. And you're going to have to choose your COM port. I know that I'm plugged into COM3. If this is chose incorrectly, it will never download from the radio. You have to choose the correct COM port that your radio is plugged into. Sometimes it's just a matter of just trying it with one or two of them until you find where your COM port is. Sometimes they're not labeled on the computer. We are going to hit download here. It's going to let me, it's going to clone from the radio. It's pulling whatever is in this radio out and it's going to open it in another file. And there we go. It has opened whatever is in this radio. Your radio is going to sometimes come with something in it, in the memory files, and sometimes it's not going to have anything. We want to scroll to the very bottom to make sure there's nothing in here. And we are going to go ahead and delete out anything that's in the radio currently. There, the, these frequencies don't really do anything. They're not tied to your area, and they just need to go. So to delete them, I am going to left-click the number one column. I am going to hold Shift on my keyboard, and I'm going to click the last column in the radio, which is 22. Yours might be different. There might be some blank space and it might have more channels down here, but we just checked, there's nothing in there. We have clicked everything. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click anywhere in here, and I am going to hit delete. It's 22 memories, and we just wanna delete them all. So now we have a blank radio. Your radio that is plugged into the computer is blank. So we just wanna click back over to this, this is the programming file that we've sent you. And basically, it's the same thing. We're going to click that first column. Sometimes it's going to be one. Sometimes it's going to be zero. But the first column, you want to you want to left click that first column. And we want to scroll the whole way to whatever the last channel is in here. Now, sometimes I got a lot of stuff in here. I don't think I'm going to go up to 900. But going up to 200 or 100 and some is certainly going to be within the programming parameters that I've sent you. Again, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to left click that last channel. It's highlighted everything in here, even the blank spaces. And we are going to right click again. We're going to copy and we are going to go back over to our radio. We are going to right click the first column. I'm going to right click right here in that first column and I'm going to hit paste. Everything will copy right over and you could read all the notes that we've put in and what they are and everything. You'll be able to see all of the programming that I've put in. Okay, before we write this into the radio, you're going to want to go to settings and look at your channel display type. We want to display this as name. 
Mine's already on there, but yours might be on frequency or channel number. You want it on name for both of these because what I named it in the memory banks is how it's going to be displayed in your radio. This makes everything less confusing. So go ahead and go in there and change that over to name. Make sure that's like that. And then we can get into writing it to the radio. Now, what you want to do is you just want to copy this into the radio. So we're going to go back up to radio. We are going to hit upload to radio. Same thing. We have the K5 plugged in and we're just going to hit write to radio. Make sure your radio is on. The COM port is selected and it's going to give you uh, instructions again. As long as all this stuff is correct, go ahead and just hit clone. This could take a second depending on what radio you're using, but it's usually pretty quick. You'll see your radio flash and go through kind of an animation. And once it goes back up to the channel mode, you can unplug your radio and it is ready to go with all of those channels input. One additional thing I want to show you is I put frequencies in here, especially if you have ordered the ham frequencies. And sometimes I put the 1.25 meter band in. So unless you have a tri-band radio, you may see an error. So we're going to download the UV5R. As you can see here, I've put the program file in and you could see anything on 224 or 222 the 1.25 meter band is unsupported with this radio. So if you do not have a tri-band radio, some of the ham bands just may not upload. Again, you can just ignore it. You might lose a few repeaters by not having a tri-band, but we try and provide you as many repeaters as possible. And you can always go out and buy a tri-band radio if you want to utilize these extra channels. So what it's gonna do is I'm gonna hit okay, and you can see on the ham, some of these are blank. Those are the ones that just couldn't be input because it's not supported on a dual band radio.